Well, hello, this is Laurie Stratton with the Stratton Set List at Grove Studios, and I'm pleased to welcome my my, my fourth guest on my podcast, <laughs> Allie Evanson. Thank Hi. you, Allie, for coming all <laughs> yeah. the way out to meet with me today, and happy first day of spring. So, yeah. Is it? I think so. Oh, wow. If I'm wrong, you guys can correct me later. It but... feels nice outside, so that's good. <laughs> But thanks for coming out here to meet with, you know, meet with me today. And I just wondered, how have you been doing over the past year with, you know, with the pandemic and kind of hunkering down and just kind of getting through each day? Yeah. um, I mean, I feel like I'm as good as I can be. Whenever, like when anyone asks me that question, I'm like, I don't know, am I good? I feel like I'm good. Yeah. (laughs) But um, I mean, I I haven't been at times and I've also been good at times. But um, no, I've been doing pretty well. Um, Just kind of staying inside. Uh. Yeah, I, I I found a love for The Sims again. So that's, nice. that's, <laughs> that's, that's a lot of quality like, time. Fun, yeah. <laughs> yeah. The last time I played was in middle school, and I was like, you know what? <laughs> I'm gonna pick it back up, and now I'm just like obsessed again. So um, yeah, I've just been like doing that, playing guitar every day, uh, working. I I do online lessons. Um, yeah, that's about it. <laughs> <laughs> well, have have you felt any like you know sudden bursts of creativity over the last year? You like in terms of writing or or even re- you know recording or anything like that? Yeah, um, I mean, I I wrote my new single in uh, from like I don't know like July to like you know, and then I recorded it and put it out like a month ago or not even like a few weeks ago. So. Um, but yeah, I mean, I have a lot of half songs that I've written. It's been kind of hard for me to write. Um, I just feel like I write best when I'm busy and when I'm like alone and I live with my boyfriend. And sometimes like, even though he's in the other room, sometimes I'm like, oh, I can't, I can't say, <laughs> like, I just can't write lyrics right now because I feel like he can hear me. And like how I write is super embarrassing. And I'll just like say random words, that don't, like, <laughs> like a random sentence that doesn't make sense. And I hope he's like in the other room like not hearing me but um yeah so I am I have like a few songs that I've been working on but for the majority I've just been trying to just at least do something every day musically yes Yes. like even if it's learn a song that's what I've been trying to do and I'll just like sit on my couch and pick up my guitar and play something even if it's like something that I've played a million times before but I've I've just been kind of like revisiting my songs for my EP and like like making different versions of yeah, them because yeah. it feels like a new song right, right which is nice so that's that's like what i've been doing recently so that's fun <laughs> so with all that you know with all the time we've had over the last year and not seeing as many people and you know kind of being at home more mm-hmm. is there anything you've kind of learned about yourself like as an artist or like a songwriter as you know even if you do have half written songs or you're revisiting your previous ones mm-hmm. you know is there anything you've learned about yourself from like a creative standpoint or even just a personal standpoint like, um yeah, I like I already said it, but I work best when I'm busy and when mm-hmm. I have like so much going on and then I'll come home and like be able to like let it all out. Yes. Um and when I'm like sitting on my couch doing nothing all day, it's really hard for me to write something. Yes. Also, like I'm in a very like healthy, happy relationship now. Good, good. And um it's it's a little hard obviously to write when you are like feeling fine. Yes. <laughs> um so yeah, I mean like I've, I've just been drawing influences from other things, too. Um, yeah, I've just been trying to write about things that aren't so much about relationships and more about, like, I have a song that I'm uh, trying to write about my friend who passed away okay. um, yeah. a few years ago. So it's just, like, I'm trying to write about different things that aren't so much about me, mm-hmm. I guess. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's been a challenge, I think. <laughs> and I've and I've learned that I... Uh, yeah, it's hard for me to like shut up about myself. I think. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's true for most people when they write. You know, yeah. they tend to think of kind of from their own viewpoint. But then I think some people, you kind of when you have all that time with yourself, that quiet time, you have time to step away and say, "Oh yeah, okay, maybe I could re- write about something else other than what yeah. I'm going through all the time." Yeah, exactly. I hear you. So, <laughs> and I guess like I mean, bite my tongue. Uh, my new single is kind of about that, but um, I also wrote it about something that I experienced like four years ago. Okay, so it was yeah. nice to like not write about something that was happening right now Yes, and write about something that I'm like completely removed from now. So that was, that was actually kind of easy to do. I don't know. It was therapeutic for <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> sure. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, it's been almost a year since not so pretty came out. That came out last April. I remember because mm-hmm. I had done a piece and talked with you for, for, you know, when that came out, but yeah. you know, like as you look back and listen to it, you know, how does it sound to you now? Like, what do you think about the tracks that are on there and what they mean to you? Um, I, I like I I don't know how to say this without sounding like 
condescending, but I, I, I feel bad for that person in a way who I was. Um, and I, I'm, I'm happy that I'm not that person anymore. Um, because that person was very, very sad and yes. going through a lot. Yes. And, um, but I, I, I listen back and I, I'm, I still love all of the songs, but there are like certain songs that I can't listen to. Mm-hmm. Um, like, I mean, I don't know. Playing them is different than listening to them, I think. Because now that I've like taken a song and like made it a different version, it almost feels like a completely different song. Um, so I think like there are a few songs on there that I listen to and I'm like, damn, I was, I was <laughs> going through some stuff. But like, I also listen back and I'm like, no, I'm really proud of these songs too. So yeah, but I'm still really proud of it. And I, and it's nice to like, hear that and hear my new stuff and like see growth, which yes, is good. Yes. And, and I'm glad to hear that you're in a better place now. Cause yeah. I remember we talked and you had written those songs. You were going through a tough time. Yeah. 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 And I'm glad to hear that. That's kind of, you've been able to grow and kind of get, get past that. Cause yeah. we all face those times where that happens and we don't like who we are at a certain point in our life. And we just want to like, let that person go and like, let the new person come in. Yeah. You know? it's, <laughs> it feels great to do that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and as, as you've thought about that, you know, you know, how do you, how do you feel like you continue to evolve? You know, like your focus, you know, you're in a better place, you know, things have changed in the last year dramatically for all of us in a lot of different ways. You know, mm-hmm. how do you, you know, how do you see yourself evolving like artistically, you know, since the release of that EP, you know? Um, I definitely feel like the, like I said, like the subject matter of my music mm-hmm. is kind of shifting and it's less about relationships and more about life things, <laughs> more about just like different aspects of life. But um, I think just as a person, I've, I've, I mean, I've changed so much since then. And I've like, I feel like I am the person I wanted to be mm-hmm. a few years ago. And I'm really happy that I didn't become something that I didn't want to be because I was kind of on the track. I was headed for that. Yes. Um, and I, I don't know, like, obviously I hate being inside. I hate 2020. 2020 was like, it should be illegal to be a year. Yes. But um, <laughs> no, I like hate it so much, but it, it also, it like almost helped to be in my house and just to like have time to where I could like heal. Yes. Because I think like in being in public all the time, being around people all the time, you don't have time to really think about what's going on in your head and almost sitting with my thoughts helped. And I don't know, like, usually that makes me want to, like, go crazy. But (laughs) I don't know. Like, I think being, staying with my boyfriend and, like, him being, like, a beacon of light for me has really helped, too. Because it's just been nice to just, like, be at home and, like, just have fun with him every day. And I know, like, both of us definitely need time apart, too. Because (laughs) there are days where we're like, oh. But, um, but no, I think, like getting away from especially the people that were causing me yes. a lot of pain yes. helped a lot and and like kind of knowing that I don't have to see them ever again is nice yes and I don't yes. have to like be in that place ever again I mean I'll probably go through another thing and be sad too but like it was just that was such a specific hurt and it was nice to just like go through this awful year but in a sense grow as a person yes yes yeah I understand yeah with all the changes and things that have happened and then actually having time to process that because I'm like you exactly I'm always busy running around doing a million things in a normal year. And then this is one of the first times I've had the time to sit down and just process stuff. Yeah. Too, you know, some, it, some things come up and you're like, Oh, okay. Yes. But then, you know, <laughs> and I wrote a song about it, which was nice. But, um, yeah, no, I think it's, it's kind of helped to heal. Well, <laughs> absolutely. And kind of leading into more of the kind of that optimistic outlook, like more of a happy, you know, I thought we could talk about some of the tracks from not so pretty, like yeah. more of a happiness specifically. And I remember talking with you and you mentioned you had kind of, you know, that song had really helped kind of put you in a good mood when you had, I know you had co-written it with uh, mm-hmm. Katrine Knoll and Jim Lauderdale at one yes. point, you know, you know, what was it like to co- collaborate with Katrine on that track? And have so you cool. worked with her, you know, have you thought about collaborating with her again since that track came out? Um, <clears throat> Sorry. So that was, I, I went down to a songwriting retreat in Louisiana to do that. Um, And well, I didn't go just to write that song, but I, w- <laughs> I went to, there was like a, a whole retreat yes. thing. And then there was a festival that we played at the end of the week. Um, so I met everyone down there and I met Jim and Kat um, down there and we were paired up on the first day of the retreat and wrote that song in like three hours, probably. <laughs> um, Cause we were kind of forced to keep it within like a f- five to six hour time period. Um, and we wrote the song and I remember, like, 
obviously we took a lot of like breaks and it's I just remember it so vividly because like that on that trip that was like the moment I realized I can't have coffee oh no and I can't have caffeine (laughs) because it messes me up and like I was just like jittery and like super like focused on the song um but it turned out really beautifully and um yeah what we wrote doesn't really sound anything like I definitely produced the shit out of it but um (laughs) no I think like we we wrote it as like this cute little like acoustic ballad thing and Mm -hmm. everyone just like thought it was the cutest song ever um and no it was like one it was amazing working with two people that I had never met in my whole life and met like the day before and barely knew um because it forced me to like stop being so in my head and it forced me to be like this is an idea I have and I'm very scared to tell you because I'm very scared that you'll think it's awful but I'm gonna tell you (laughs) um (laughs) So it was cool to, like, meet these people and, like, share these, like, feelings with them. Like, and definitely, like, I, we were on the track to write a sad song and we were like, no, let's make it a happy song. (laughs) Um, Which helped a lot, too, because it was my first day and I was like, I don't know if I can, like, put my heart out on the table in front of these people. Um, But no, it was, like, amazing. And Jim is just, like, a legend in the country world and it was just, like amazing and he like had this absolutely beautiful Collings guitar and I was just like oh my god (laughs) um and Kat is French Canadian and it was awesome to like write a line in French yes with her I mean (laughs) basically I think she wrote the line and then we translated it and we were like wait that's really cool (laughs) um and then it like weirdly matched up with the chorus of the song which was nice so um yeah that was a that was a cool experience definitely well, and since it has such a happy memory, as people hear it now, you know, how do you hope it brings some kind of a sense of peace and happiness, especially with a lot of struggles that people have gone through yeah. you know, throughout the pandemic? And no, it for sure does. I mean, like, I know that a lot of people like that one a lot. Um, a lot of my family members are like, oh, that's my favorite one because it's the happy one. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> They're like, how about another happy song, Ellie? I'm like, oh, I'll try. <laughs> um, but no, it's it's definitely like, that's pro- that's one of my favorites on the EP just because it's so... It's just so fun and it's just so cute and like old timey. And it's also like one of my favorite ones to play live. Um, I don't know. It's just, it's really like bouncy and fun. I also feel like it's a nice song for the first day of spring. Oh, yeah. I feel like it kind of has that, like, you know, the lights start to come back in. Yeah. It's starting to feel a little more optimistic about things changing, especially yeah. this year. I feel yeah. like it's a fitting anthem for that. Yeah. And I feel like it's like now that the weather's. Ugh, fingers crossed uh getting better i like every year i go through this like week long thing of whenever the weather gets nice i will solely play mac demarco yes in my car perfect Um, yes yeah and like i really don't listen to him a lot except for like that like week of the year um but i feel like this song also fits in that thing like windows down like yes yes breeze in the car sunny sunglasses all that stuff i'm gonna put on mac demarco now you gave me a good i appreciate the idea i'm gonna steal that of course (laughs) he's actually perfect for that no i know well why don't we have you get ready to perform more of a happiness now that we've had a chance to kind of like go behind the track all right. Let me. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Oh, 
like the boy shown to love a friend He sang ah, more of a happiness Less of a funny the acoustic version of that track too. yeah me too it's like <laughs> it's more of how it was written <laughs> is that one of the ones that you've kind of been re have you revisited yeah. is that one yeah, yeah i think i have like three versions of that song now <laughs> or like four probably because like there's definitely the one on the ep the full band version right and then there's like this very like radio heady kind of like <laughs> super like ambient uh sparse version of it cool and then there's like a nice happy folky version yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well yeah so and do you see you know so like how many what are some of the other songs that you've looked at kind of like reworking from not so pretty um burning room which okay, i will yeah. play that, nice. that one today yeah, um, yeah yeah that one uh more of a happiness i think that's probably it like i've I mean, there's obviously, like, an acoustic version of Not So Pretty. There's an acoustic version of each of the songs yes. on the EP because that's just how I wrote them. Um, why don't you call me anymore? I've been trying with that one. <laughs> that one's hard. I that's can see, just I can, a hard song. Yes, I can see that to try to, to, try to like... It's a weird song to, like... Because <laughs> I think just, like, how I wrote it was how it is. And I didn't want it to be any different. And I feel like... Because it's in, like, I think it's in, like, 6-8. So I feel like that, in general, is, like... And the chords are weird. It'd be hard to do, like, a different version yeah, of it <laughs> without, like, keeping it similar to the original. But, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that one I could see might be the most difficult of, if I think of the five that are on there. Yeah, 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 yeah. for sure. <laughs> <laughs> well, like, kind of, let's talk about Burning Room. So, like, what was it like to write and record that track for you initially? Again, I think that was another one where you're overcoming, like, a difficult personal mm -hmm. situation. You know, how was that track... You know, how did it come about and how was it therapeutic for you to kind of write and record and release that? That track is actually like, weirdly enough, it's, it's like the saddest one on the EP, I feel, but like also doesn't connect to me at all in a way. Like I, I wrote it about like a fake scenario kind okay, of, yeah. um, I, it started as a real thing. Like it started about uh, my boyfriend and it started with the chorus, which is, uh, you're the only voice worth hearing anymore. Yes. And you're the only thing that's keeping me from hitting the floor, which was just about him being like absolutely wonderful and helping me through this awful time in my life. Um, and I was like, but I don't want to write it about, and I was like, sorry to him, but I don't want to write it as like a love song to him. <laughs> yeah. Cause I have, I, I was like, I have no idea how I would make that sound good and not cheesy. Um, <laughs> yeah. so I kind of just thought about, I, I, I don't remember, like I probably watched a movie or something and was inspired by something that happened, but I basically changed it into, it's a song about this person who is just absolutely in love with this other person and this other person does not give a shit about them. Um, and like definitely like knows that they're there, but like just doesn't reciprocate any feelings. And this person doesn't care what they do. They will love them always. Yes. So it's just kind of like, it's a sad version of a love song, I think. But um, yeah, I just, I had this idea of like, like I, I just thought it was like so sad to like, write this line in about like this person just like lying in a burning room yes, with right. like pages and pages of things that they wish they could say to this person, but never will. Um, and they're like 
I don't know, like, would it mean something to you if you found me just in this room? Like, would that get you to notice me kind of thing? Um, and I just like thought that was so sad. And I was like, wow, I've never experienced that. It's, like, it's not so even... vivid is what I love yeah. about those lyrics in the song is yeah. that I could just see someone in that room in that scenario as, yeah. you know, as you're singing it. And so. I don't see me at all. Like I just see like a right. person. Or a I person. Think. Exactly. Yeah. Right. So I think it was just like the weirdest one to write to because I was like, technically I'm like taking this from kind of personal experience, but like the only time I've really like. Like, I, I think I said this before, but, like, the only time I really ever, like, experienced that was, like, middle school <laughs> when I was, like, just absolutely in love with this oh, boy cool. oh, and yes. he didn't even notice me. And I was, like, but that, like, it still happens to people and oh, it's yeah. not just, like, a middle school thing. No, like, it's, it's not. It's all, and, and, like, I know people who are like that and I know people who, like, love people and it's just, like, this person does not. Doesn't pay any attention, no. doesn't care. And, and, yeah, and it's and hard it's to sad. watch that. Yes, it, it is. is sad. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. But, yeah, so that one is... It's it's sad, but it also like I can listen to it and be like, yeah, this I don't I don't feel like super connected to it. I yeah. mean, I, I need do I do because I wrote it, but like, um, it really doesn't have like a personal gotcha. connection to me. I hope that doesn't make people like it less. I don't think so <laughs> <laughs> because I wrote it for people, not me. <laughs> yes, and I think it has a universal application. To a lot of people can like as you're saying, we know a lot of people in that situation. Yeah, for sure. But why don't you let's go ahead and hear that one too then. Cool. Um, let me grab that. Go ahead. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> All right. I'm going to get situated. Yep. <laughs> and I like your special red vintage guitar, though. Thank that we were you. talking about earlier. We were, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to take this off. Yeah, thing. no problem. <laughs> it's an old K if for people that can yes. see it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. If I heard you 
That song just gets stuck in my head. <laughs> yeah? That's yeah. good. Yeah. <laughs> I'm happy. That's like probably one of the least catchy ones. So that's good. It does. <laughs> it's just something about, like I said, I think it's just something about the like the vivid imagery as, I, as we were talking about earlier. Just yeah. This really sticks with me because I'm a big, you know, like I love lyrics as a writer and, and like lyrics will stick with me as I hear people sing them. And so mm-hmm. that, that's good. Yeah. I, I definitely feel that way. Like there are some um, like Elliot Smith songs that are definitely yes. not like pop catchy songs Not but it just sticks with they it and totally like stick. certain lines do yes because they just hit really hard yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah absolutely well and i wanted to ask you like you know i know throughout your your time at dime and afterward you worked really closely with like elise mccoy mm-hmm. and i know she's been like a mentor to you like yeah. musically artistically you know how has she kind of helped you kind of like you know hone your songwriting kind of you know especially as she's you know worked with you on the ep and i know mm-hmm. she's worked with you on your new single you know, what is about what is it about your partnership that really kind of really helps you out as an artist? Um, she has really inspired me with production, too. I feel like that's probably the main thing. And like definitely like now I feel like I am able to sit at home and create a demo and have it not sound super bad <laughs> um, because I think just watching her and, and like being there when she's, you know, mixing and stuff and recording and just like watching all of like the little things on logic that she does is super (laughs) cool and i feel like being partnering with her with my or doing my ep with her and producing it with her was super cool because i had never really done i had never really thought of production before and i think for a while like i mean when i was younger like 17 to like 19 i was like Everyone talks about production. I was like, what is that? <laughs> I was like, I literally have no idea what production even is. I don't know what it means. Like, I know that people produce songs, but I'm like, I guess I don't. I, I never really understood it. And then, like, I got really, like, I, I realized and I was like, oh, why did I never? Like, it? I feel dumb, but I'm like, I never knew that. And then, like, I just started appreciating producers way more. <laughs> and I was like, wow, they really kind of just make a song, don't they? Um, so I think like being with her and like getting really, really into production now. And like, that's all I can hear in songs, which is kind of annoying too. Cause I'm like, I wish I could just sit and listen to a song without being like, Ooh, but like, listen to the tone on like that thing. Like that sounds so cool because like all the time I'm like, Ooh, I'm going to steal that and take it for one of my songs. But like, I think that's one of the best things too, is like just getting inspired by production is super cool yes. because like, I think we live in, we are in such a like, like the popular music right now is just like so well produced. It's so it's very produced. And it's just yes. so cool. Yes. And like like I think like hearing like folk artists or like you know even like jazz artists or things that you wouldn't like normally hear like yes. pop production on and you hear yes. it it's so cool. And I think like I've always been a sucker for like big pop production like looking back at like all my favorite songs when I was a kid. Same. I was like like it's all like super cool like I, I mean, I don't know, like, who? I'm trying to think of. Like, wh- my favorite Katy Perry song was E.T. Oh, that's a great song. Because I just yeah. loved how, yes. it was, how it sounded. Yes. And I think it was just, I, I'm really drawn to, like, dark, creepy production anyway. <laughs> so I think I loved, like, I, I, I like production from a young age. I just didn't know what it was. Um, but, yeah, so I think working with her was so cool and, like, figuring out, like, how to make things sound different with such easy things. Like, just you change this like the tone of something and you're like wow this is a completely different song um so i think she inspired me a lot with production and definitely just i i trust her a lot with my music and i just feel like i can go to her with something and be like hey tell me if this is good or not (laughs) and production's always since i'm not a songwriter and artist but production's always one of those things that's always fascinated me yeah it just sort of feels like it's like this magical quality that somebody can bring to someone's song you know add another element to it you know, whatever that might be. Mm-hmm. And I'm always curious, like the how of how that works. You yeah. Know? Yeah. I was always curious too. <laughs> and then I kind of just like sat in and I was like, wait, this is so cool. And I'm still like, I will not consider myself a producer, but <laughs> it's like super cool to be like a co-producer on something. Yes. But yes. yeah. Have you ever thought about co-producing like outside your own material, but like with another, like, like yeah. a collaborative effort with another artist? I would or love friend? to do that. Yeah, yeah. I would love to do it. I feel like it'd be so cool to just like, 
I don't know, bring certain ideas that I have to somebody yes. else's music. I would just like want to hear it so bad. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Well, and let's kind of move into your latest single, Bite My Tongue, which I think might be one of my favorite ones that you've released. Me too. <laughs> I just think that song, like, it's just, it just has, it like, it just hits you in, like, a good way, and it mm-hmm. just, like, stays with you, and I feel like it has, like, such a cinematic. Yeah. Like, it just, it, I just feel like it just rises, it elevates, it sends, and then it yeah. kind of comes down after all that, you know, so, and I get the impression, too, that this is another song that's about a past relationship that went wrong. You know, and you mentioned yeah. earlier that it was from a few years ago mm-hmm. or based on something from a few years ago. Yeah. You know, what is it like reflecting back on something from several years ago in this song? And what is it, you know, what does it make you think about, as we talked about earlier, the person you are now versus the person you were then when that was happening? Yeah. I mean, I was 19 when, young. when <laughs> yeah. I was so young. And looking back, I'm like, God, I was like a kid pretty much (laughs) and I think I just um I'm really happy that I I mean obviously I'm happy there are times where I'm happy that I'm growing up there are other times that I wish I was 19 again but yeah (laughs) not in that situation um but no I was I was so young and I didn't know what I was doing and I was like and obviously like I don't know you can't blame me for not knowing what I was doing I was so young and naive and I was just like (laughs) this is fun. This is a fun thing to do. And I just like looking back on that. I just, I think the main thing is I just look back and I'm like, that was so messed up. What I went through (laughs) was just so messed up. And like, it's nice to get all of those years to, to take all of those years and remove yourself from that situation and kind of like realize how messed up it was. And I was like, uh, basically there was just like a power dynamic happening. and, And there was just taking advantage of how young I was, taking advantage of how, you know, naive I was and how much power this person had over me. And it was just like, it's not great. And I think like, I, I look back at that and I'm, I just, I'm so glad that I got over that in a good way. Yes. (laughs) Like, I'm so glad it didn't, like I didn't spiral, which I think for, for a while I did for sure because it, I was like that and then my friend passed away oh, yeah. and then I got involved in a relationship that wasn't like it was just like this person and I just did not go well yes. together and I was in this relationship with this person for like two years which is not who the song is about but it's just order of events yes. of yes. like what the song's about happened and then my friend passed away and then I got in this like just that good relationship and it was just like Huh. there's just like a lot. And now I feel like I'm finally with someone who makes me happy. And I'm finally like away from all of that. And I just feel like I can breathe, which is nice for a while. I felt like I was like being suffocated by everything, but, um, yeah. So I think I just, I look back at that experience and I'm just happy that I didn't lose it. Yes. <laughs> yes. And it sounds like, and I think we've all been in those situations where we've given someone too much power, yeah. like over how we feel exactly. or how we process things yep. and to take that back and go, Hey, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to move on from this. I'm going to mm-hmm. let, I'm going to get past this and, and not ever have that happen. Hopefully yeah. again. You know. And I think like, we don't even know how much power we give them sometimes oh because gosh, I think no. like just being ourselves sometimes and just me being a 19 year old girl, yes. like just yes. gave that person so much power anyway, because I was just like, I was just happy and I didn't know what I was doing. And I was like, oh, this is fun. I'm just having fun with my friends all the time. I'm just 19. Like, that's what you're supposed to do at 19. Exactly. You're not yes. supposed to go through something like that at 19. Right. And it just like, there's a there's a verse in um, Bite My Tongue where I kind of just talk about, I think the line is, um, I don't miss you. I just want it back. Yeah. And that's just kind of about like my youth. And that's just kind of about like me being 19. Like, I just want to go back and relive that part of my life and just do it the way that I would have yes. done it if I wouldn't have gotten involved in that yes. situation. So I think, yeah, I just, I miss it too. Like I just, I miss like that. And I'm like, oh, I just wish I could go back and just get like those four months of my life back. I hear you. But yeah. Yeah. And, and I feel like at that age, it's, it's that, that's such a like formative years for people as you finish mm-hmm. your teens, move into your twenties and have a lot of changes happen. Exactly. I can tell you, there are many times I wish I could go back and do stuff completely differently than what I did at that age. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, and I know like on the track, you, again, you work, you co-produce with Elise, you mm-hmm. know, what did she help bring to this track in particular as you guys were working together on it? Um, so the track started as a demo that I produced. Okay. Um, just on 
I think it was Garage Band actually. Um, and it, it's it's funny to hear it now because it's like it's essentially the same song. Like really, the production didn't change a lot. We just completely redid everything and made it sound professional. Um, but I think like I sat at home and this song started out on guitar, just on acoustic. And it was sad and slow first. And I was like, this is an angry song. I was like, this needs to be big and heavy. Um, and I had just uh, started playing with Zilched. Yes, um, yes. And I think I was just playing a lot of heavy music then. And I was like, I'm going to mess around with Distortion. I'm going to do it. And I like, I love, like the Deftones are like one of my favorite oh, yeah. bands cool ever. Yeah. I love like heavy music. And I've, I've always just like been drawn to like dark, heavy stuff. And I think... I had never really done a song like that. And I was like, I'm going to do it. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I just kind of sat and did uh, stuff on GarageBand for a while. And then I sent Elise. I think all I had was a chorus. I think all I had was, yeah, the chorus, really. And at first I just sent her an iPhone memo of just like, sorry, <laughs> I like burped. Me, <laughs> me no playing guitar. <laughs> um, I was like holding it. I was like, oh, it's no. all good. <laughs> um, <laughs> But no, so I think I just sent her an iPhone memo of just me and acoustic. Um, and then she said she loved it. And then she said it reminded her a lot of Noah Gunderson, yep, who I'm also yep, super yep, yep. inspired by. And I love his song, The Sound, which I think it, it's on the playlist of songs that inspired um, Bite My Tongue. But nice. like, I, I just love how it starts out kind of like, not quiet, but it starts out like, you know, lower and then just like explodes into like this awesome big distorted like heavy chorus yes, yes um and i also love how night shift by lucy dacus does that mm -hmm. yeah that's and a good yeah absolutely. your best american girl by mitski like yep. all of these songs that start out so quiet and then just like hit you in the face and i felt like the chorus was strong enough to do that with and i had the chorus for so long and then i wrote the verses like three months after i wrote the chorus um but i i produced the chorus first i just had the chorus and i knew that i wanted like just dry drums in the beginning and then i wanted like heavy stuff in the second half um so yeah i finally like finished the demo and sent it to elise and the guitar the acoustic guitar throughout the whole song is actually from my demo nice. <laughs> which is cool and there are actually other certain things in the song that are from the demo the um the little like dreamy intro thing yes yes um austin actually did that my oh, boyfriend cool. he just like I was like, I had the like thing and I was like, if you want to just go in there and mess around with things, I was like, just do it, please. Um, and he came over to me and he was like, um, I think this is bad. And I was like, what did you do? And he was like, if you hate it, just please delete it. And I was like, okay. He was like, cause I don't, I don't know if you'll like it. And I listened to it. I was like, that's so cool. What are you talking about? I was like, this is awesome. So yeah, that's, that's from the demo. Nice. There's like another little like twinkly guitar mm -hmm. thing from the demo. But um, yeah, so basically just Elise and I started just like replacing things and just going through and like redoing everything. I played, I played all the guitars on this track, which was cool. I, uh, I didn't do that on my EP, but um, I felt really proud of myself that I did that with this one. And then I had Dwayne Hewins, yes. who played drums on my EP play on this one. Um, yeah, and then my friend Ben Collins of Mini Horse also nice. uh, helped me mix it and do some things with it. And um, we actually um, took program drums and mixed them with Dwayne's drums. Because um, I, I wanted the drums to just, like, be super, like, dry and deep and, like, punchy. Yes. And I feel like that's sometimes really hard to do with live drums. Um, and where the live drums were, they just weren't getting to that point. And I was like, I think, I think I want to mix them. And we, it was like the perfect mix of live and programmed, which I, I honestly love the sound of program drums. Oh, I, I do too. Really I, do. Honestly, I, I like, do yeah, I definitely love live drums, but like in certain songs, like this one, I was like, we need program drums. They it's can, cool. They can just add a really like almost hypnotic element. Yeah. In my opinion, with a lot of songs that I like, like if you think a lot of popular songs we were talking mm -hmm. about earlier that have that. Yes. Yeah. Very cool. So that was fun, but Elise engineered it all. She recorded everything. We also, I recorded things from home okay, and yeah. sent it to her. We recorded in another, we recorded the vocals in another studio and then she mixed them and you know, everything back there. And then Ben, uh, 
mastered it and mixed it. Nice. Yeah. 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 I was going to ask you, like, if you guys had to do some remote collaboration. Yes. The way ben and I bad. Zoom mixed it, <laughs> oh, which was so weird. That's got to be odd. <laughs> but worked because it sounds great. So, yeah, we uh, he just had Logic up on, like, share screen. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then um, some weird audio thing where I could, like, actually hear the real audio, which was nice. So we would just kind of sit there and I'd be like, oh, let's do this. And then we did that and uh there are a few like last minute things on it that sounded really cool like the vocoder at the end of the song yes that was last minute i was listening to a lot of imogen heap yep and i yep, was like yep. i want vocoder <laughs> um so yeah that that was definitely i've always wanted to do something with like vocoder i know that she has like her little hand thing but she's got still. like a whole you know invention that she made but like it's still the same sound and i was like yeah i want to do that because there was just like that end and i was like it's not it's not hitting hard enough. And that somehow just made it, like, pushed it yes. right where it needed to be, so. And I think it's funny that you named off, like, Lucy Dacus was one of the first things I thought of when I heard that yeah. song. Because I'm a big fan of her music, so, yeah. yeah. And Whiskey, oh, yeah. I could hear that, too, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. They're both, like, super, like, big inspirations to me. Especially, yeah, I I love Mitski very much. <laughs> <laughs> I think she's just the coolest, and I would really love for her to come back to music and do other things. Because <laughs> I think sure. she's, like, taking a hiatus, but I'm like... Oh, I just I want more music. She can command a real presence in the room. I saw her at the Magic Bag. Uh, oh man, maybe 2017. That's awesome. And she, I've always it was like a completely sold out show, and she was phenomenal. Yeah, it was she's a wonderful show. Amazing, absolutely amazing. But my friend uh, Megan actually, she said when she first heard like the one of the first like mixes of Bite My Tongue, she was like, "This is your night shift," which is Lucy Diggs' song. <laughs> yeah. I was like, "Oh my god!" I thought that's a perfect comparison. No, no, like, it's right you. on. <laughs> yeah, super cool to hear her say that. I was like, "Oh, thanks." <laughs> well, why don't we go ahead and hear "Bite My Tongue" too? Cool. I'm excited to hear kind of an acoustic version of this one. Yeah, it's definitely. Uh, <laughs> I, I do my do my best with what I <laughs> yeah. what I can do. I can't do a lot of the, <laughs> the cool, cool things. things. Shut up, and I'm holding back All the empty space is filled with your stories of a time You'll soon forget Do I still remind you of yourself Wide-eyed and hopeful living hell you put me through for loving you and you asked me why I would always lie why I wanted you
That would be a really cool, like, version to enter for, like, NPR's Tiny Desk. Right? Yeah. No, I know. I would love to play it, like, super acoustically. That's what I I mean. If I ever got on Tiny Desk. Yeah. (laughs) Well, have you thought about, like, uh, are there any plans to ever release, like, a lyric video or, like, I'll say a traditional music video for that song? Yeah. um, I'm actually probably going to do that super soon. Nice. Um, Probably going to film it in April. Okay. Hopefully it'll be out by like early May, end of April. Cool. Um my friend Chloe, who is Zilched. Yes. Um, she does all of her music videos and her and I are gonna do something nice. super fun. Nice. So I have some ideas. I think it'll be it'll definitely be dark and spooky. Cool. Because <laughs> <laughs> I originally wanted to release this song when I you know <laughs> when I didn't know how long it was gonna take to do it. Right. right. I originally wanted to release it on Halloween. Um, because that's like my favorite day of the year. <laughs> and I was like, this song is like dark and fun. And I feel like it'd be a cool Halloween thing. And I could do like a Halloween themed music video, but I feel like I would much rather, I'm glad I didn't. I'm glad I sat with it and I'm glad I'm like, oh, this is a cool idea for the video because I want it to like, I mean, obviously it's, it's not going to be super obvious what it's about. I, I want it to be definitely be confusing and weird <laughs> i i love david lynch and i feel like i <laughs> want it to be kind of like that yeah. people would be like huh okay um but yeah so hopefully that maybe a lyric video too that would be cool i i, I like the lyrics in the song so i would definitely want to like do a cool video for it <laughs> well you could save halloween for something else you know yeah, yeah. no so. i i definitely this year i'm definitely gonna release you got time to plan <laughs> you yeah. got time to plan <laughs> yeah <laughs> Well, it, it just kind of as we're looking, like, you know, still kind of early in 2021, what other plans do you have for new material? Are you going to continue to do a series of singles, or do you think you'd want to go back and do an EP or even an album at some point? Um, I definitely, for a while, I was like, oh, I'm, I'm going to do all singles this year, and I, I still might. Um, but I would like to take all these songs that I've been working on and put them into, like, an EP at the end of the year or nice. something. Um Obviously, I would love to write an album. I'm going to see how this year goes. <laughs> I, I, it's, not, it's like an album is something that I don't, I'm not going to say no to and I'm not going to say yes to. It's yep. just going to be out in the open. And if I write enough good songs, I'm like, oh, maybe I'll, maybe I'll put them in an album. Maybe I'll like do that. <laughs> but I feel like that's such a, I think just as any artist, your first album is terrifying. Oh, it's like, gotta be. It's like, gotta I feel be. like that's just, it's such a daunting thing. And you're like, oh my God, it's such a big task. But I feel like it's almost not in a sense. Like I could, and and what I want to do too is I want to take like one of the songs off my EP and like redo it and put it on an album, cool, or yeah, yeah. my first album or whatever. Right, right. And I would also like to do like one cover song and just completely like change it. Like I had this crazy idea to do like um, this French aria, and not even it's not like even an it's like a just like a beautiful like classical French song, and I just want to like make it super weird. I just have like an idea, but I told my dad and he was like, okay, I was like, well, maybe not. But um, Well, you got a shot because your French sounded decent on uh, More of a Happiness. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> I actually, I actually sang the song that I want to do that with. I sang it um, when I took vocal lessons in like high school and stuff. And my instructor like gave the song to me. And I love it. And Barbara Streisand does an amazing Oh, nice. Of it. Nice. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So it's beautiful. And I love, I love French. I wish I could fluently speak it. <laughs> Because I think it's just such a beautiful language, but it is. <laughs> I was supposed to go to Paris this last year, but it didn't happen. Same. I was yeah. supposed to go in the summer, and yep. it was didn't. very upset. <laughs> yeah, I hear you. Well, maybe another year. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, how soon do you think you might release another single? Are you looking like in soon, or or you, or you want to wait till you get a chance to do the video for "Bite My Tongue" yeah. and let that kind of like you know sit and kind of chance to circulate for a while before something else comes yeah, out? Yeah, probably like early summer. Okay, I would nice. do something. Yeah, like in I don't know, maybe I'll do it in Gemini season because I'm a Gemini. Yeah, I'm a Taurus, so I'm not too far. I'm, <laughs> yeah. like, I'm like three days from the cutoff of nice. like what I would become a Gemini. <laughs> yeah. So real close. <laughs> yeah. Well, and what about like anything planned for like live stream shows or do you see yourself getting back to like in-person shows as the weather warms up? Do you feel ready to do that, especially <laughs> with starting to get vaccinated and everything? Hopefully. I, I mean, I'm doing uh, two live stream shows coming up. Um, Neither have been announced, so I don't know what okay. I should say. But they're, I'm doing two coming up. Um, and then I really hope I can do, like, outdoor shows this summer. That would be amazing. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm just going to, like, keep everything open. I just – I hope I can do outdoor shows because that would be just, like – that would just boost my mental health. Yes. Yeah, oh, absolutely. <laughs> and, like, it would just reassure me as an artist because I think, like, 
I'm sure everyone during 2020 went through like, and I even like, why am I a musician? Like, this is not the business is it's done. Like the industry was like just on a complete halt for so long. So I feel like doing a live show again, like especially outdoors would be so cool. And I, I like outdoor shows. I think they're fun. Well, and I think that's kind of where we're going to be going next. Oh, for sure. We, I feel like yeah. that's the only... Yeah. I, I feel like there will definitely be live shows outdoors this summer. And I like that's honestly, to me, like, I would prefer to do that. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. I don't want to go inside and play a show for people yet. I'm not ready to be packed in with people until <laughs> nope. we know, like, the mass like, exactly. population's been vaccinated. Yep. And to me, I think that's going to be 2022. But Oh, yeah. for sure. Yep. Yeah, yeah. No, it's definitely going to be another year, which makes me so sad. But, like, also... I would much rather be safe than oh be I, safe I, than sorry. <laughs> I'd rather wait till everyone's safe. I agree. As yeah. much as I miss it too, as a fan and going to see because I used to go a lot. Um, I want to wait till everybody can be together safely before. Yeah, we get for back sure, again. for sure. But well, I look, hope to catch you at an outdoor show at some point, and I'm yeah. looking forward to seeing more people get a chance to do that. So yeah. But I want to thank you for joining me today. Thank you for coming out. Yeah. Thank you for sharing your music. Thanks I look forward for to seeing me. your video for Bye Bye Tong and look forward to hearing other singles you have coming out. So yeah. again, thank you for being part of the Stratton set list here at Grove Studios today. Thank you so much.